what is up YouTube it is your boy Ben and today in this video I'm gonna show you how you can get your digital images looking like film now I'm gonna put two photos up on the screen one is film and one is digital can you tell which is which now if you are a film photographer it probably wasn't too hard to tell but if you're not that familiar with the look of film it might be a little bit more difficult for you so if you want to see how to get your images that much closer to looking like film, stay tuned. First and most important thing in my opinion is taking the digital edge off of your pictures. How do you do that? A diffusion filter. For me, I use a Tiffin Black Pro Mist on this camera and on my digital, ca digital camera that I take my digital images with, which is the GFX 50 S2, I use my favorite diffusion filter and it's on it at all times. It is the Hollywood Black Magic Pro. Now this filter is very subtle yet has a very profound effect on my images. It's kind of hard to describe. So I'm gonna put it up to the camera. Hopefully my fingers don't get in the way. And I'll let you guys decide for yourself. I'm gonna take it around the frame and you can kind of pinpoint different parts of the image that you wanna look at. And then I'll put it on. And that's what it looks like with. Now, remember, I already have a Tiffin Black Pro Mist on here. I believe it is a 5%. So the effect is kind of going to be magnified for this filter. But it is subtle if this was the only filter on it. So I'll take it back off again, put it back on. And it's pretty nice. As you can see, it's subtle even with the other diffusion filter on there. So I have used a Cinebloom 10, a Cinebloom 20, the Tiffin Black Pro Mist 5, and this. And this has been my favorite by far. I don't really know how to describe it, but if you like it, go get you one. You will not be disappointed. And the second thing. So this is a little bit more tailored to the type of camera you have. So for me, I have a Fujifilm and it has a variety of dynamic range settings. If you don't have a Fujifilm, I am sure that you still have a dynamic range setting if you are looking to optimize it. That is exactly what I try to do when I try to get my film images looking a little bit closer to my digital images just for cohesiveness because I like to shoot kind of low contrast images. For me, that means the light I shoot in is usually soft light. So with my digital camera, I like to turn up the dynamic range setting and shoot in light that is soft so that I get images that look closer to what I see with my eye. They don't have a lot of pure black and they don't have a lot of pure white. And this is something I really like in my images, but it's really just personal preference. So just find the dynamic range setting that works best for you. And why do you want to change the dynamic range settings in your camera to get them looking closer to film? Well, I'll tell you. Film is great with highlight retention. As the light sensitive crystals on film are exposed, they become less sensitive to light. So that means that you can overexpose the living crap out of film and still have skies with white clouds in them. With digital, you would have the skyline and then white. So, I recommend trying to get the most dynamic range as you can out of your camera that also suits your style of shooting. And the third thing is color. Now this is a little bit more complex and there are a lot of settings that can alter your color but the first one i recommend setting is white balance so film stocks have set white balances for example cinestill 50d has daylight white balance cinestill 800t has tungsten white balance so set the white balance to your favorite film stock and then go through and change your settings with that set white balance because that automatically eliminates one variable when you have your white balance set to auto that's really just making everything really hard. You're gonna be working for hours to get the look you're going for. So I recommend sitting, setting your white balance at the film stock 
white balance and then changing your settings from there to get it to look like the film. And the next thing. So if you are a Fujifilm user, you've probably heard of Fuji X Weekly. If you haven't, you should go check them out. And even if you aren't a Fujifilm user, I think there is still value to be found in these film simulations and you can find a lot of similar settings between camera manufacturers just with different names. So I'll provide a link in the description and these settings really do simulate the looks of different films and I highly recommend. So I'll put some pictures that I took on their Portra 400 film simulation up on the screen. And as you can see, they really do mimic the look of Portra 400. And that's coming from someone that mainly shoots Portra 400. So if you're not into all of that in-camera stuff to get the look you are going for, and you really do want to shoot raw images just to have that extra flexibility before you go out and shoot JPEGs and then want to rip your hair out because you can't alter them to get them looking like you wanted, and I've done that plenty of times, then stay tuned because I'm going to take you in Lightroom and show you some of my favorite Lightroom profiles to get your images looking like film. So now we're in Lightroom and I'm going to show you guys how I would edit a raw image using the profiles that I mentioned previously. Let's just start with the raw image and my dad came up this morning with some newborn baby goats so I snapped a picture of them in his truck because it was kind of funny. So we're just going to start with that. And the profiles that I use are from the archetype process. I will leave the link down in the description. And I'll just go through and show you guys what it consists of. So I have the Kodak pack and they have normal, pushed, and pulled. So I usually use the normal and I prefer the Noritsu look just because it's a lower contrast look and it gives me kind of the look I'm going for because I'm going for something to look like how I saw it. So as you go through here, you can see that automatically these will get you a look pretty close to film. So there's Portra 160 and my personal favorite, Portra 400. I use the Portra 400 Noritsu normal for most things just because I find that it looks closest to the images I get back from the lab. I'm gonna put that on there and already it doesn't need a lot of adjusting and I've found that these profiles work great from the beginning. You can turn up the amount, turn down the amount. I usually leave it right around 50 for my raw images. And then, like I said, I like lower contrast images, but I'm not particularly upset with the contrast this image has. There's just one thing I would do, and that is raise the shadows just a tad and lower the exposure just a little. And I think that gets it pretty close to looking like how I saw it when I was actually there in the moment. And I might just dial back the contrast also a little bit and leave it like that. And then the final touches, I will put a film texture overlay in it. So let's go to Photoshop. So here we are, there's the picture. And I like to add white backgrounds and black borders to all of my images. It is personal preference, but I also like it because, as I said, I don't like my images to have a lot on either spectrum. My computer is not calibrated as it should be, so when I get it on my phone, it often looks different than what it is on my computer. But I find that when I put black and white around the image, it's a lot easier to gauge the overall look of the image just by comparing it to the black and white borders that are around it. So I'm going to do that for you guys and just show you how I do that. In case you are interested, probably not, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And then I just make this a little smaller and center it up. And then I make this smaller 
And I do also like it because it resembles a film strip. Center that up. I don't try and get exact with it. It just is what it is. But after I do that, it's a lot easier to gauge for me the overall colors of the image just because I already have black and white there. After I do that, I also like to add film texture onto the image. So I got this pack for free online and I usually use the second one just because it provides a little bit of variation and it has the little dust things. So I usually just drag it and drop it till it fits. And then after that, it's really just per personal preference. Depending on the image, I will use overlay or screen. Most of the time I use screen just because I find that I do like my images to have less contrast and it gives me that. But as you can see, it's way too strong. So I'm gonna dial back the fill and I usually go moderate on that. And then if I see that the photo needs any adjusting after that, I will usually only tune it in the levels. So we will go to levels here and I will clip it to that layer. So once we get into levels, I see that the screen took away a little bit too much contrast. So I would probably add it back. Not a lot, just a little. Maybe up the whites just a little as well. I'll zoom in so you guys can see the overall effect the grain had. It's very subtle, but that's the way that film is. It's not a lot. And it also softened up the image, took away the digital edge. So this to me looks like a picture I would take on film. Now for you, it might not totally look like your film pictures, but for me, this is the way I edit my film pictures when I get them back. I don't do anything too crazy, just to my taste. As always, thank you guys for taking your time to watch this video. I hope that you did find value in it, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I would ha be happy to answer them as best I can. Now keep in mind, I am no expert when it comes to any of this. I am just sharing my own personal experience. And frankly, I think that's the most valuable knowledge, but someone who studied film or any of that could probably give you more sound advice. But this is all I can do, and I hope you found value in it. So if you did, or you have any questions, drop me something in the comments or like this video. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.